The decision to have knee replacement surgery typically comes when knee pain from arthritis or an injury keeps you from doing activities that are important to you. You may have tried non-operative treatments already, but are experiencing pain when walking, taking stairs, working, and sleeping. Your surgeon may have determined from x-rays and examination that only a portion of your knee is diseased, and you are a candidate for a unicompartmental or partial knee replacement. This is a smaller procedure where only a part of your knee is replaced, and recovery is potentially easier. After you have the discussion with your family about getting a partial knee replacement, you will meet with your surgeon to set expectations about the surgery, recovery, and living with your new joint. Watch this video produced by the American Association of Hip and Knee Surgeons to see what you can expect on the day of surgery. You arrive at the hospital approximately two hours prior to the start of your surgery. Once you're settled into the preoperative room, members of the orthopedic team ask you and your family if you have any changes to your health history and answer any questions. They take your temperature, pulse, respiration rate, blood pressure, and check your lungs. You may be given medication to prevent nausea, inflammation, and pain. Your surgeon meets with you to confirm the site of surgery and the procedure to be performed. The surgeon or an assistant marks the surgical site with their initials. The anesthesiologist discusses with you the risks and benefits of the types of anesthesia available and helps you select which is best for you. This patient opted for regional anesthesia that numbs from the waist down. Ultrasound is used as a guiding tool. Medication through the IV is given for sedation, which is a light sleep. General anesthesia is made available as a backup and can be administered during surgery if necessary. The orthopedic team members apply an antiseptic to the skin of your leg to help prevent infection. Prior to starting the surgery, the surgeon confirms with the team the surgical side, proposed surgical procedure, and that antibiotics have been appropriately administered. He draws landmarks of your knee joint on your skin. A tourniquet may be used prior to the skin incision. Your surgeon makes the first cuts. Retractors are used to keep the surgical site open and aid him in moving around the inside of the knee. They use a cauterizing scalpel to help prevent blood loss. An injection of local anesthetic, anti-inflammatory, and pain medication is injected into the incision site to assist with pain control after the surgery. The surgeon moves your lower leg throughout the surgery in order to access parts of the knee in bent and straight positions. Once the knee joint is exposed, the surgeon will begin to prepare the surfaces of the ends of the thigh bone, the femur, and the shin bone, the tibia, to get them ready for the implants. The surgeon removes bone spurs to help balance the knee and make sure the implant is put on bone as opposed to the bone spurs. Some tissue is removed to aid the surgeon's visual inspection of the inside of the knee. The front part of the medial meniscus, the cushion between the bones, is removed. The surgeon makes an incision above the kneecap and inspects the knee joint, checking the anterior cruciate ligament, known as the ACL, cartilage of the kneecap, and the other side of the knee. If the surgeon determines that the knee is more damaged than expected, a total knee replacement will be performed. Some cartilage on the knee shows bone exposed with little cartilage intact, while the cartilage on the outside of the knee looks normal. This knee will require only partial replacement. Your surgeon locates the ACL. They use a tool to remove some bone from the arthritic area of the knee. This will also remove pressure from the ACL. The surgeon drills a hole in the thigh bone as a guide to prepare it for the implant. Cutting guides and special surgical saws are used to remove only as much bone as will be replaced with the plastic and metal components. Once the arthritic parts of the bone are removed, 
The surgeon checks tension on the ligaments with spacer blocks to ensure appropriate tension in bent and straight positions. The rest of the meniscus is removed. The surgeon assesses the size of the bone to match up the components for an exact fit. More anesthetic and anti-inflammatory medicine is now injected around the knee. The trial components and liner are inserted to check tension and fit. Once the fitting and testing are complete, your surgeon selects the final implant parts. The surgeon removes the trial parts while the surgical team prepares the bone cement. This is a liquid and powder that are mixed to form a doughy epoxy that is used to adhere the components to the bone. It is flexible for 15 minutes and fully hardens in several hours. The surgeon injects the cement and applies it over the bone surfaces. The surgeon places the components, removes the excess cement, and clicks in a trial plastic liner. The knee is then moved around to check balance, and the surgeon inserts spacers to determine if the size of the liner is appropriate. The final liner is clicked in, and all the final implants are in place. Once the insertion of the components is complete, the surgical team will close the surgical site with sutures. In this case, absorbable sutures are used. The opening is closed in several layers to create a watertight seal that helps with healing. Additional medicine is injected into your knee. A waterproof dressing and bandages are applied by the surgeon. You are then transferred to a recovery room. A partial knee replacement surgery without complication will take a few hours in the operating room. In some cases, your surgeon may determine that you can safely go home on the day of surgery. However, most patients can expect to stay at least one night in the hospital after surgery depending on their health and your surgeon's preferences. Your surgeon will schedule post-operative appointments for you to ensure that your incision is healing well and that you are making appropriate progress. It can take up to three months for you to return to most activities and likely six months to one year to fully recover to maximal strength and endurance following surgery. This depends on your condition before surgery, additional medical problems, and your expectations. We offer a library of materials written and reviewed just for patients by members of the American Association of Hip and Knee Surgeons, who are experts in the field of hip and knee arthroplasty. Learn about caring for your joints, alternative therapies, replacement surgery, living with your new joints, and more at www.aahks.org.